Hello, uh, I'm Richard Raffin. Uh, a few weeks ago, uh, I rough turned these cylinders, um, and they've uh, when they were green, uh, they've now dried out enough. They've each distorted a little bit, uh, around an eighth of an inch or so, uh, three millimeters. Um, so they need trimming up and finishing off. And uh, I'm aiming to show you several ways of going about this. So these. Uh little pots have distorted uh, quite a bit in some cases. This one has gone from uh, 58 mil to nearly 62. So it's uh, uh, four millimeters out. That's just over an eighth of an inch. So, uh, and it's much the same on the bottom. Uh, that's a uh, 77 to 81 which means that it's not going to the four jaws will not clamp around the base so my aim is to get this round so that it's not going to be wobbling around when I do the hollowing so I'll actually grip it by the the top first and now that means the teeth are gripping there, but probably not round here. Whoa, that's um, quite a gap. And not much of a gap that side, so I need the, the gap here. I need to have much the same on the other side. So just going to bring the whole thing over a bit. Check it and check it. It looks about, yeah, it looks about right. So I tighten that up now. Uh, I can bring the tail center up for just for security, and it also it's going to be useful to know where the center is when I come to the final chucking up. And this is cross grain, so uh, this is all facework techniques, and I will be uh, just truing this up using a spindle gouge, half inch spindle gouge, as I would normally for facework. Come in from the side here. And I'm going to true up the bottom so that it sits nicely back into the chuck. Got the chuck a bit more. Using the wing of the tool, just squeeze the tool in. Now I can hear that running smooth. And then I can turn the tool over, take a shear cut back to the middle. Right, and that'll be round enough. Uh, there's still a, oh, a little bit of torn grain there. I thought it was a flat, but uh, that's going to be all right. Now I can take that out. And this one I go right back into the chuck and sit square. Oh, no, it doesn't, in fact. I didn't get that done quite enough, but there is a, uh, a fairly good shoulder there, so that's going to be what butts up against the jaws. As I prepared the other two, I failed to capture the sound. Now, the large one wouldn't fit in the jaws, so they had to come down so that I could fit the piece over, and because it's oval, it's still going to be rocking around a bit. So I tightened the jaws just enough to... Uh, Keep it fairly solid, bring in the tail centre for support and then true up the bottom and this is using the half inch spindle gouge uh, which is what I would normally use and then true up the bottom and check that it's slightly undercut so it fits nicely flat into the chuck. Now this one wouldn't go over which was pretty irritating um, and so it went over a cone which was mounted in the chuck, so essentially jammed between centres. Again, truing up the base section, then, then, the, uh, then the bottom. Check that it's flat. And then I turn this around into the chuck and start to hollow it. There we are, and that will seat right back into the chuck and run true. Just true up the outside, and it's fairly thin. 
and then we're back in the real world with commentary and lathe sounds as well. The lathe sounds are always so important to hear. So there's not very much, in fact, no, not not very much at all to play with in there. So this um, this piece might be a write-off, or it might end up as a, uh, a much shorter pot than I'm expecting. Um, just ought to measure the depth first. So I'm down 110 millimeters to there. So. Uh, that means I have uh, 20 mil, three quarters of an inch basically, in the bottom to play with. So that's fairly comfortable. So if, um, so if I don't get the whole deep thing, uh, I will at least have that. Now this is extremely thin just in there. Just see how much. Yes. Don't really want it any th any thinner than that. Uh, so there's a very good chance of losing the top of this. I'll just true up the top first. So I'll do with the uh, the three eighths bowl guard. This is a half an inch diameter. Of this bowl guard. So the flute is three eighths. Right. So three quarter inch square end scraper which isn't completely square I've got a nice kind of slight curve here going to scream a bit more but let's see how we go uh, it's a little bit kind of rough just in there but I think I can have another go at that now I am using a square end conventional square end scraper and the reason for that is I just want to use the the corner the left corner and I keep the rest high enough that only this side is against the opening. I'm trying to go very gently with my hand on top to take the bounce out of the wood. down to the bottom. Now I need to know how far down I'm going. So that's really the absolute maximum I want to go. I'll turn those around there. Yep. So I'm going to be holding holding the tool near the ferrule. Um, so I've got the, the handle up against my forearm. You can feel where the edge is. further down than I can feel with my fingers. Um, I'm just going to, it's very uncomfortable going in on this little sharp edge, so I'm just going to take that off. And pay to sand it at this stage, or just a little bit. This is uh, 120 grit. Just round it over. It means there'll be less blood if I do uh, catch myself on it. And so going all the way down in there actually looks quite clean, quite good. Uh, and there's just a very little 
uh, uh, residual cone from where I uh, drilled the piece out originally with a uh, with a Forstner bit. So the idea this time is going to be just come up through the center, up through the center, and then drift the the left corner over to the side. Right, so that is that. I now need a sanding stick, which will be that one. And it's a pretty good cut. It's not terminally thin there, so that's good. And uh, this gets sanded by wrapping a bit of abrasive around a stick with a slit in it. Basically it goes in and that's it. So I won't bore you with that. Um, you can just see how it's done and with a uh, with a fresh bit of abrasive this which which uh, this isn't uh, that'll get me a very nice clean surface in uh, oh, probably about 10 seconds. Right, so this now goes back between centers. This is the block I used before. Um, this is now loose, and I can eyeball it. It just the uh, uh, taper I need just to be slightly less than that diameter. Skew chisel because this is center work. Center work length somewhere around there should do it. With a bit of luck. Not so lucky. Right, so that isn't the right diameter. Down to the cylinder first and then just ease the tool around a bit. Now that's, when I rub that, I can see where it fits because uh, there's a slight blemish on the wood uh, from the oil inside the, uh, the pot there. So I want this to fit right up against the shoulder so that when I tighten the tailstock, um, the force is against the rim and not um, not against the uh, just forcing the side out. Now uh, the other thing which has happened here is that this is during the sanding flared out very slightly so this is going to be a, a bit of a tapered fit. Too loose. Good chance of them now be too tight. It's so tempting just to push it a little bit further on, but you don't want to do that. So too risky, so just take a teeny bit off there and hope that that does it. Yep. Right, so that's that. Now the tail center comes up to where it was before and I don't want to take anything off up here at all but I can leave a fair amount at the bottom where the pencil lines are uh, that's where the bottom the inside is so I've got plenty of I've got a quite a nice thick base which is what I need on a tall thin uh, piece like this so I'm going to put things in it. Uh, the rest is dropping down a bit and I'm going to take a sheer cut with the uh, 3 8 bowl gouge. trajectory just wrong. Um, so that can come down here again. Now this is center work so another way of handling this is to um, 
the very thin bit up here uh, is to shear scrape so this tool's going up on edge now fortunately the chuck is wood so I can um, just work straight through the rim has a slight lump there and I can feel a small flat or something so I can take that off most easily with the uh, with the shear scrape very thin there right so got away with that um, and I'm just going to shear scrape a little bit of detail up at the top here. It'd be nice to have something just underneath the rim to uh, just to give it some interest. Maintaining that is going to be a little bit difficult because there's there's only oh, about a millimetre or so uh, up at the top point and I'm looking for my skew chisel. It's going to just get the point in there and I can use the bevel side or the, yeah, the bevel side just to get a little shaving off there. just cleans up the top a bit. Now um, I do have a problem right up here because I can't sand all that unless I take away some of the um, some of the shoulder. So I'm just going to reduce that. Do it with the gouge because I can't get in there with the skew. Right, so now I can sand that. So I set about that with 180 grit, which has done a pretty good job, but forgot that I need to attend to the bottom. Um, now at the moment there's a very small kind of ridge around the point. And any people who really were worry about there being a market centre the other turners um, uh, but if I want to disguise that a little bit I can make three little grooves in there using the point of the skew oh might as well go across the lock and so suddenly the bit in the middle becomes a uh, begins to look like a bullseye. So now I can carry on sanding. So this is uh, polished now um, uh, with uh, boiling seed and some beeswax uh, and that comes off. Now uh, that might be on securely enough uh, I'll risk it uh, to just sand that off otherwise you can just do it by hand but I'll keep the abrasive up against it and this is the macho approach if it comes loose and you just have to grab it uh, seems okay and so we've got a fully decorated bottom and only turners know what that center dot is all about so inside um, this is uh, not as smooth as it might be because uh, there wasn't very much to play with. We'll do very well in the workshop. So next one. Uh, this is the big one here. Just put that into the jaws. Now this will bottom out because I trued that up. Um,
Uh, so the aim in here is to get the tool in, keep this side rubbing the bit I've just cut, um, trying to keep the tool horizontal and, um, and parallel to the lathe axis, then it'll just cut the cylinder inside. I don't actually mind if it's slightly wider at the bottom. So I'm trying to keep well over the tool handle. inches to go. Now right into the bottom and then I can feel where the shoulder is where I've just stopped. tool vibrating. Um, don't really have a heavier tool unfortunately. Just have to have a look. Right, I have another uh, this is also a PN tool and I need to go in just up to the just uh, slightly shy of where the black ends. Same thickness but wider, so it's a bit stronger. And there we are on the bottom. So I have to feel where I'm going. I don't get it dead right, there's a little pimple right in the center. So I've got to bring the tool up through that by leaning on the handle. Then get the left corner in and just drift that across the bottom and that should clean the end grain. And then I need a lamp so that I can have a look inside. Uh, still a little hole from the uh, drill I had originally, otherwise it doesn't look too bad. Do this with the half inch. Mostly because it's got a slight radius curve on the edge. Oh, I'd forgotten I've got almost nothing in the bottom of the plate. Yeah, need the heavier one because that's just snatching a little bit. to true up the rim.
take off the sharp edges. And it doesn't look too bad coming along all right. Now this time to finish the outside I'm going to um, reverse it over these jaws and uh, just get that down. So I'm going to use some uh, non-slip cloth and that will go into the slot there and then all the way around and into the slot there. This is a bit fiddly. Right. So that will go into there. That will go over. I don't need to risk tightening it quite so much. And I can bring the tail centre up. Um, and same again, then just uh, come along. And, um, and just true that up. I don't have a huge amount to play with here again. I think just to the right of the nose of the tool. I'm going to call the back cut. Pulling the tool down onto the rest rather than pushing it against the wood. to know quite how thick that is in there. Enough. Um, probably about a quarter of an inch, maybe a bit less. thinking is I might be able to leave a little band of um, a, a little band of beads there which would be quite nice so come up all the way from the bottom again Slight bulge there, so safest way to remove that is shear scraping. So tool up on its oops, it's a skew chisel. I could do it with a skew chisel, but I'd rather do it with the proper tool. Hand plunge on the rest, and I can just squeeze the tool back and forth while I'm keeping an eye up here on the upper horizon. And when I've got it there I'll just chamfer that. Now I'd like a teeny bit more off up here I think. Yeah I'll do that with this with this as well. running out of rest a bit. Now take a little shear cut of the three eight spindle guard. Just 
pivoting the tool in until I find the shaving. He's just there. Right, and so uh, time to move the camera again, otherwise I'm going to block you. I just checked the wall thickness again, and I've uh, still got a bit to play with there. And this is slightly narrower than up there, and it would just look better if it was tapered. So, in with the uh, So in with the bowl gouge again, you're going to get to see a top view. Oops, didn't mean that little bit. I've got a hint of a kind of curve there now, which is not exactly what I was after. <laughs> Looking to the edge. Now the other looming uh, problem is going to be how do I cope with the top and I'm going to cut my beads and then come in from the other side and I'll just have to rechuck it. Maybe I won't, maybe we'll try flowing it out and see what it looks like. Right, that's just not cutting. Oh, I think I can probably uh, live with that and uh, now sand that. So this is all sanded down to uh, 240 grit and uh, I now need to just check that the rim's okay so I could do that by hand but uh, I can also just back the whole thing off slightly. So there's a little bit of a gap um, between the jaws and the outer rim. Just tighten it up gently. Right, so all I need to do is actually it does feel all right, but that's the way you do it. And then that will run there. And I just need to get a bit of um, of 240 grit in there. That's really all it needs. So there's enough grip with the uh, with the cloth there that I can cope with that now. I'm going to, just going to wind it back on. So that's now up against the jaws. I might just tighten that a wee bit. You've always got to be careful about tightening, especially with older chucks, uh, because when you turn the lathe on, there can be enough centrifugal force just to ease these out a fraction, enough of a fraction to split your thin rim. Um, now, across the bottom, I uh, just need to make sure that's uh, it's not quite as undercut as I would like, so that actually needs a little bit more, and I'm going to do that with the 3.8 spindle gouge.
Put a tool start driver on its side. Take the whole cut across. And right on its side at center. Now before I take that right off, I'll sand this bit. That's a pretty clean cut. Not the sort of thing you'd get off a carbide tip, I suspect. huge amount holding that so my thumb is the lateral fulcrum and the whole idea is if it does come off then at least I can catch it. Yep, that's okay. Two forty grit, find a bit which is still pretty rough. Or rough for two forty grit anyway. Right, and with great relief that's done. Now I haven't oiled it yet, I'm just going to oil these, uh, oil this off the lathe. Because I can't reach easily into the bottom and um, and so I can just pour the oil in and uh, then pour it out, so to speak. So I'll do that later. So that's come up quite nicely. Inside, I oh, should have spotted that earlier, a little bit of kind of tarnish grain there, but I can live with that. If I can't live with it, I can paint it on the inside and cover it that way. And call it art. Now, I began to feel a bit guilty about the uh, roughness inside this pot. I think it really isn't very good for my image, putting that out in the public domain. So this gets wrapped up in some cloth and stuck in here. A kind of minimal pressure and it's running smooth enough. We can cramp it down a little bit more. Um, and then I'm just going to get at it with some uh, some fresh 120 mm. ah, well the grain which was picked up in there uh, has now been sanded away uh, although I started off with 120 it actually uh, needed about a minute with 80 grit uh, and I think this is uh, probably desert ash, which is uh, a much more difficult timber to work than the claret ash, which I thought it was. So, that must be almost the last piece I have, and I'm glad to get rid of it. So, I've now got this one, which will fit into there. This does not go right back into the... Um, right back into the chuck. It seats against those jaws. Would have been better if I had just cut that shoulder a little bit more, but anyway, that's going to be okay. Right, first thing is to true this up, and we'll see that from this end. Uh, oh, it's the 3 8 spindle guy which comes to hand.
and so I want to keep us not completely round yet uh, I don't want to keep enough body uh, as much body in there as possible while I hollow out the inside so we'll shift the camera around so you can see that so this will be more of the same and see the start of the cut what's happening over at about four o'clock Right, and that's vanishing because uh, I'm trying to keep out of the camera, uh, but we're about to lose vision. Than you do. All right, so that's down, and a little bit of a lump in the middle. Just check all that again. I've got about an eighth of an inch to play with. feels nice and smooth across the bottom and it is right so that's the inside done now I sand the inside before I do the outside so I'm working the outside in relation to what is inside because often you take off a lot more than you think uh, when you're sanding so in onto that with uh, 120 grits and um, take that through and uh, I won't bore you with that uh, so the inside is sanded. Um, I forgot to do the rim, um, and I normally do that with my uh, three eighths uh, bowl guard, a half inch diameter bar. I'm you know, just going to take that across there, and then I'm going to cut as much as I can here. This is very slightly out of whack and um, that must mean that something's changed as I've turned I haven't pulled it off center or anything like that and it's certainly a bit rough or maybe I didn't turn it off properly in the first place I thought I had fairly thin that's nice and clean this wood I think is low quartz either that or Mongolian pear Manchurian pear rather like Bradford pear only more foreign low quartz very nice to work and a bit harder than uh, the pear. Right, so for this part, uh, here we are back with the uh, shorter, sh smaller shark jaws and the um, non slip matting. Looking over there, whoops, a little bit sticking out. And we'll bring the, the tail centre up. Now this time I've got a nice smooth base and uh, all I need really for that is a, a disc um, which can go in to um, support the bottom.
Right, and it's face work, so uh, here's, the, uh, here's the gouge, and I should be cutting from smaller to larger diameter for a, for a good cut, so I'll do that. It's a little bit awkward to get in, but... Coming off just to the left of the nose of the tool. <laughs> the kind of almost look at it as a lump there, so again, very little to take off. So I'm going to be better off. Um, uh, taking this off with a um, with a shear scraper. So there's a separate video of me doing the honing, so holding it close to my body, so I've got a better grip. I think this wood might scrape very well, so I've got a an 18 TPI thread chaser here. Drop the rest down a bit, and I'm just going to just try it on here. This is something I should have tried first, I suppose, but. Just to make sure it does work on this wood. Seems to be all right. A bit more aggressive this time. In fact, a lot more aggressive. Let's come back and do the other. That really desperately needs something just up in there. So I think that's a little kind of mini bead. Maybe I'll just make. No, I don't think it'll look good if I just make it those a bit larger. I'm just going to have to try and get in with a couple of those just up there. Right, I run into trouble there. So what I'm going to have to do is to uh, just back the whole thing off so that I can get the tool in on those two top beads, I hope. This is needless excitement for me. So I've got to try and get that running dead true. Not going to be so bad at the other end.
pretty close. There might be one more bead than I was expecting. Right, that will do it. I'll sound up the bits in between. Doesn't need much sanding, fortunately, so uh, just get out with uh, with the 240 grit. And we'll just do a bit in reverse. <coughs> get a fresh bit of blue. Is uh, 240 grit. Don't really want to go onto the the grooves because they'll just be flattened. smooth enough that it just needs uh, the 240. That's it.